Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel today. We have a hilarious update on Bud Light that they have lost their LGBTQ plus rating for the Dylan Mulvaney partnership. Obviously, this Bud Light partnership with Dylan Mulvaney has backfired in so many ways. First, you have the catastrophic sales drop. Second, you have the stock price plummeting. Third, you have all other Anheuser-Busch brand products being affected by this. And now lastly, you have the LGBTQ plus community trying to cancel Bud Light for good. When you think the Bud Light boycott news is finally going to die down, think again. We have perhaps the most hilarious update to date. Let's dive into the report. First things first, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to all of the new subscribers to this channel and for the people that have been with me since day one, which is two months ago. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for the rapid growth of this channel and all the support. So another hilarious headline by the New York Post. Let's dive into this article. It says here, the nation's largest gay advocacy group stripped Anheuser-Busch of a key metric following the beer giants backpedaling over Bud Light's controversial tie-up with trans influencer Dylan Mulvaney. If you missed what Anheuser-Busch did after the Dylan Mulvaney fallout, obviously I highlighted all of the bad things that have happened to them since then, but essentially what's going on here is that Anheuser-Busch, on an earnings call, their CEO of AB InBev, the parent company of Bud Light, came out and said, listen, it was just one can. It wasn't an official partnership. So he didn't disavow. He didn't, And he also didn't apologize for the partnership. He just simply stated this was one can. It wasn't, it wasn't official release product. But as many of you are familiar with, by either being silent, which is now deemed violent by the woke mob, if you don't bow down 10 times harder, and every future partnership better be with an LGBTQ plus whatever influencer. That's what they expect of you. But if you just backpedal a little bit, and I don't even think in my opinion, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I don't even think the CEO's comments were backpedaling. I think he was just trying to, you know, mitigate future problems, which obviously have not gone well for him. I think he was just trying to point out that it wasn't an official partnership, but as we know, the woke mob will come for just about anybody, but let's continue on with the story here. The human rights campaign, which issues a corporate equality index to rate companies on their policies towards workers in the LGBTQ plus community. Pause one second there. You wonder why we have so many companies like Target, Adidas, Nike, Maybelline, Disney. Uh, the list is going on and on and on now. You wonder, and Levi's too, you wonder why they're all doing this crap. There you have it right there. They're basically, uh, long story short, being issued lines of credits uh, and getting perks for being all inclusive of this, even though it has nothing to do with their products whatsoever. But this agency, they told the Belgian-based brewer, again, it's not even US-based anymore, that it will slash its percent 100 score according to a letter leaked to the USA on Thursday. Now make sure to smash that like button if you are enjoying all of the backlash from every side of the argument to Bud Light here. I love that the boycott is still going strong and this is just another fatal blow to Bud Light. It's hilarious because they really have been in total panic mode since the Mulvaney partnership, which in hindsight, Alyssa Heinerscheid was again, there was going to be case studies on this fiasco in 20, 30 years, hopefully sooner than that when America finally levels off and more people like all of you patriots that are bound together by the Bud, Bud Light boycott, hopefully we get some sense back in us and hopefully we aren't bowing down to these woke mobs in the future and hopefully our culture experiences a nice revitalized rebound. But in today's times, certainly in the future moment, that might be a little too much to ask for. Let's read the official statement from the company themselves that divvies out these ratings. Anheuser-Busch had a key moment to really stand up and demonstrate the importance of their values of diversity, equity, inclusion, and their response really fell short, according to Eric Eric Blom, HRC's senior director for, I don't know if he's got two first names that are Eric or if it's a typo, but he's a senior director for HRC's programs and corporate advocacy. Now, what's funny to me about this on a multitude of levels is that why do, 
why does Bud Light have to be involved in this in the first place? That's always been my stance since the Dylan Mulvaney partnership by just selling beer and advertising your product to the people that buy your product. Why, you're not excluding anybody. Why do they have to bend the knee like this and appease every single person, even though a lot of these people aren't their target customers? Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments. And again, I've speculated that the sales drops are much worse than what's being reported. And it seems by quotes like this that there's a lot more going on behind the scenes in corporate America with these ESG standards, with these woke initiatives, with these just crazy, crazy hiring standards now where they're it's like Harvard admissions, right? They're prioritizing candidates that happen to be from a different demographic than white males, let's say. It just seems like it's all a coordinated inside attack inside attack, excuse me, to accomplish something at a much higher level, obviously, than Dylan Mulvaney, who is basically a minnow in a pond now, but has now been catapulted onto the face of the Bud Light boycott, whether he wants to be the face of it or not. So another two telling parts of this article, we'll dive into it. It says Anheuser-Busch previously achieved 100 on the index, <laughs> scoring perfectly in four criteria. Protections from workplace discrimination, inclusive benefits, corporate social responsibility, and responsible citizenship. So again, responsible citizenship to me sort of reads like a social credit score. Hey, did you make a Facebook post about Trump? If so, you're not getting promoted. Hey, are you a conservative? Uh-oh. Nope, you're going to be passed over for that managerial position. We're going to go with a liberal Democrat minority because they deserve it according to this bogus scale. You're seeing this not only at Anheuser-Busch, you're seeing it at companies like United Airlines. Their whole goal is to hire basically only female minority pilots, which again, if you think about it in terms of passenger safety, wouldn't you just want to hire the most qualified individual? It wouldn't matter uh, any of their background, any of their uh, race, gender, fluidity, etc. All these bogus terms now that the media is so hell-bent on jamming down every single one of our throats. But really, when you think about it, at companies like United, it's far more sacred and dire than it is at Bud Light. But nonetheless, we have it here as well. The second thing that stood out to me in that criteria was the inclusive benefits. I highlighted these in a previous video I've done on Bud Light. There are many now. We've been covering this Bud Light boycott 24-7, 365, until the stock hits zero. But it's basically, to me, there was leaked slideshows from AB in Bev that said, oh, we're going to help with you know gender reaffirmation. We're going to have education programs, counseling, etc." I'm guessing that those benefits have something to do with those initiatives. This is hilarious too. It says, uh, as a result, it boasted a quote, best places to work for LGBTQ plus equality seal. I'm guessing that seal is being stripped off their building in St. Louis as we speak. And it goes so much deeper than this as I've hinted at, but I just have to keep it surface level for now by trying to do good, be inclusive, and kind of get everybody on board for the trans community, which again, you know, all respect to everybody, but not when you jam it down our throats, not when you bring minors into the equation, not when you, you're you starting to push this crap on kids that haven't even decided what sport they're going to play. Uh, that's when it becomes a real problem, and that's why I've been so vocal about speaking against it on this channel. So again, Bud Light, you lost your LGBTQ plus equality sticker. Wow. We'll look at their sticker in a second here, but it just totally goes to show that this partnership with Mulvaney backfired entirely. They could have gone on under the wraps for a couple more years, pushing all this woke crap, all these initiatives, all this gender fluidity, affirmation, peace and love, kumbaya, BS internally. But of course, they had to take it a step further, and that was brought to you by a $450,000 employee, former employee, I'll add, Alyssa Heinerscheid. It's just crazy to me that in the year 2023, we actually have all of these bureaucratic institutes like the one that is deeming out these ratings to all these companies. Uh, the Corporate Equality Index, even the name of that sounds like a Bond villain, uh, empire, shady criminal enterprise where they're probably just raking in cash from all these hoaxes. And again, that's just my opinion. It just seems a little bit fishy to me. Uh, but I love how they put a 90-day time frame deadline here for Bud Light to respond. So essentially, 
they are holding a gun to Bud Light's head and saying, you got to go way more woke, get way more trans activists partnered with Bud Light, or we're stripping the score for good. So let's take a look at their official equality card now. So we can see here that they previously had the score of 100. If you guys are just listening to the audio of this video, like podcast form, please turn your attention to the screen now. Uh, there they go. The 2020 score was 100. You can see their head, headquarters location, their website address, and then their brands, which is Budweiser, Bud Light, Goose Island, Michelob Ultra. Again, we're boycotting all of these. So thank you, Equality Score, for just reinforcing what else we have to add to the boycott list. And this is where it gets a little bit more nutty. They have in-depth rankings. The criteria number one is workforce protections. Uh, policy includes sexual orientation for all operations. I mean, what the hell is that? Policy includes gender identity or expression for all operations. Again, this is just creepy stuff. Let me know your guys' thoughts, by the way, uh, if you're in the middle of the video right now, on did you ever expect Bud Light to go so far off the rails that they're now being attacked by the woke mob too? Even though they're an international-based company, obviously in Belgium, you can see that this stuff is being pushed this is the U.S. handbook here, and it's being pushed so, so hard. Uh, criteria number two is inclusive benefits. We'll read these to you. Uh, equivalency in same and different sex spousal medical, spousal medical and soft benefits. Equivalency in same and different sex domestic partner medical and soft benefits. E equal health coverage for transgender individuals without exclusion for medically necessary care. I am reacting to this as the first time. I am honestly stunned by that there is actually stuff like this. And they are grading you on a score of some categories. Sorry, I had the camera in front of it. Some categories have a score of 40. Others have a score of 30. I just slid it over so you guys can see there. But the text is so small here, I have to enlarge it so you can read along with me. So we have in criteria three, which is supporting inclusive culture and corporate social responsibility. Uh... Three, LGBTQ plus internal training and education best practices. So again, they are pushing this stuff. You, you know, whether you're a nice person and just go about your business, nope, got to take the trainings. Employee group or diversity council. Again, they probably have little subculture, you know, boards in the company that are now getting tons and tons of power and benefits because of this. Three distinct efforts of outreach or engagement to broader LGBT plus community. And lastly, LGBT plus Q, whatever, corporate social responsibility. And lastly, you're seeing here the category responsible citizenship, which again, there's no qualifications for. It's entirely vague up to them to decide. And then in the right hand corner, you have points deducted Bud Light. You are catching so many L's right now. I just can't stop laughing. The last piece of this article that we need to touch on is quote, our ERGs, which are employee resource groups are intended to be a safe space for those who identify with a given community and those who wish to be allies, AB said in an email to USA Today. So they are responding to these reports. They are trying to do damage control, and we aren't falling for any of it. If you are enjoying the content on this channel, my friends, please consider subscribing and then dinging that notification bell so you don't miss future uploads. And please make sure to smash the thumbs up on this video. Until the next video, my friends, be well and take care.